Let's solve this question together with multiple steps of momentum and energy. You can download this question from online resources. Just search for 9702 AS Physics Level from October, November 2019, paper 23. This question is number four from this exam with 11 marks. So it's a long question. Stay with me through this process that can be repeated for any question like this. This question is a cascade of events. Simply saying, two balls are coming along from different sides, collide with each other, and move it together towards a spring. And after the impact, the spring is compressed. And I'm thankful the question doesn't go farther than this. But while the spring is compressed, you'll be asked to sketch two graphs on how the acceleration of both balls is related to the compression of the spring and how the kinetic energy affects the spring as well. So it sounds like we have a lot of work to do. So if you don't have this question with you, just take notes along with me and let's start it. So let's begin with the initial description of this question. This diagram shows before and after collision. Right there is a sign we need to use momentum. The balls are labeled X and Y. Ball X has a mass of 0.3 kilograms and ball Y a mass of 0.2 kilograms. The angles of reference with the line AB are showing here. Only the velocity of ball Y is provided, and after collision, both balls are moving together horizontally. So let me read the first question. AI. Calculate to three significant figures the components of the initial momentum of ball Y that is perpendicular to the line AB. So this first question is asking to calculate just the vertical momentum for the ball Y, which is perpendicular to this line AB. To visualize the velocity components orientation for each ball, I'm going to show you a useful strategy that you can use for any question like this. I'm taking a screenshot to isolate balls X and Y, and I erased all values around the diagram, and I'm using this screenshot to draw lines. Now, draw lines how I did here to show rectangles. For simplicity of my explanation, I'm using blue for the ball X and red for the ball Y. Now let's identify the angles close to each ball arrows using a little bit of geometry. 60 degrees are congruent angles. Don't worry about this name, but I hope you can see that 60 degrees is at opposite corner of each other. And 30 degrees with 60 degrees on each corner are complementary angles. The sum is equal to 90 degrees. So this is all we need to know about the angles. Next, draw arrows to identify the components for the velocity of the ball X, which is Vx and for the velocity of the ball y, which is vy. Vxh is the horizontal component of Vx, and Vxv is the vertical component of Vx. Likewise, Vyh is the horizontal, horizontal component of Vy, and Vy 
V is the vertical component of the velocity of the Y ball, which is V Y. Wasn't that hard, right? Now we have handy the components of VX and VY. Now let's look the whole picture and identify all horizontal and vertical components with the intention to group them. This table shows all horizontal and vertical orientations with each velocity involved in this question. Going back to the question, here at the bottom asks what is the initial momentum of the ball Y in the vertical orientation, which means perpendicular to the line AB. To answer this question, we need to look at the ball Y components diagram and the information provided showing in this table. I want you to notice the ball Y vertical component can be calculated using cosine of 30 because it's close to 30 or sine of 60 because it's away from 60. A very easy trig function tip here in this pink box. If the angle is close of this vector, you are going to use the cosine, cosine of 30. Because close it starts with the letter C and cosine it starts with the letter C. Close, cosine. So you can do this way. The vertical component of this ball Y is cosine of 30 or sine of 60 because it's a way. So to calculate the momentum, I need the formula. So the formula is the mass in kilograms times the velocity in meters per second. So the mass of the ball Y is 0.2 kilograms and the vertical component is the value of the velocity, which is 6 meters per second, times cosine of 30, or you can use the sine of 60. I'm doing the option of for cosine 30. In this step, you do the substitution. And then calculations. And here the result of the ball Y initial vertical momentum is 1.04 kilograms meters per second with three significant figures. The next question is asking to calculate the velocity of ball X. For this, we can use the value of the ball Y momentum in the vertical direction from the prior question to calculate this value. And in this diagram, you can see here that we are going to consider just the vertical orientation. So we have here the velocity of the ball X downward and the velocity of Y upward. So we are using conservation of momentum. Um, so the sum of the momentum upward which is this one, is equal to the sum of momentum downward, which is PXV. So in this step, I just flip the order uh, to make it easier to calculate the value of VX. So in this line, I did the substitution, the mass of the ball X is 0 0.3 kilograms times the component of the vertical direction, which is 3XV equal to the 
momentum of the ball Y in the vertical direction, which is 1.04 from the prior question. Now I have two options here for uh, the vertical component for X. I can use uh, the X cosine of 30 or sine of 60. So I'm going to go ahead and use the cosine of 30. will not matter. You can try your calculator. And uh, here, doing the substitutions and calculations, uh, the x is 4 meters per second. So the speed of the ball x is 4 meters per second. Question triple I. Show that the speed of the two balls after the collision is 2.4 meters per second. In this case, we need to look at the whole diagram in the horizontal direction. Only VXH and VYH will be taken in consideration for this calculation. So let's use conservation of momentum before and after collision in the horizontal direction. In this table, we have the values of the masses, both masses, both velocities, and here we have the options to use for the component if we are using cosine of 60 or sine of 30. So in this line, is showing the sum of the momentum before collision in the horizontal di direction and the sum of the momentum after collision we just have here both balls together so the momentum of xy so here in this line i have all the abbreviations mass velocity mass velocity remember those are the horizontal components um, and equal to the combined mass x and y times the combined velocity here. I mean, I said combined, but you have to add the masses and here the velocity because they are both rolling together, so the velocity will be just one. Now the values, substitutions from the left table. Please work along with the calculations. And the final result is 2.4 meters per second. Now, after collision, balls X and Y are rolling together with a velocity of 2.4 meters per second towards a spring. So before reading this question, I'm going to adjust this diagram to make it easier to explain this step. So here is the new diagram. Now let me read the question. The two balls continue moving together along the horizontal frictionless surface towards a spring. The balls hit the spring and remain stuck together as they decelerate to rest. All the kinetic energy of the balls is converted to elastic potential energy of the spring. The energy E stored in the spring is given by this expression, where K is the spring constant and X is the compression. The spring obeys Hooke's law and has a constant, a spring constant of 72 newtons per meter. The term, the maximum compression of the spring caused by the two balls. A couple of points here. First one, no energy is lost due to friction. 
For this reason, all kinetic energy is converted to elastic energy. The second point, the spring compresses according to Hooke's law. It means that the force exerted by the spring is directly proportional to the amount of compression. To calculate the maximum compression, let's use the conservation of energy where the kinetic energy is equal to the elastic potential energy. So next line, I'm doing formula substitutions and I'm going to use the values in this table for the calculations. So if you are doing the calculations along with me, your compression, the maximum compression, this one, will be 0 0.2 meters or 20 centimeters. The last part of this question is to sketch two graphs. So let's take care of the first one. Here is a diagram showing two forces acting on the spring. F is equal MA. The force is increasing. Mass is constant. Therefore, the acceleration is increasing. The other force is F is equal KX. So this is the force acting on the spring. It is increasing because the compression is increasing. The compression comes from 0 to 20 centimeters. K is constant. So keep these points in mind uh, before we sketch this graph. So because what I said, it means that as the uh, acceleration increases, so the compression X also increases. So the graph is a straight line from the origin. So here we have the sketch of the first graph, acceleration and compression. Now we need to sketch a graph with kinetic energy in terms of the compression. So because the kinetic energy is converted into elastic potential energy, so this energy is given by this formula kx squared over 2. k is a constant, which means this graph is a parabola. However, because kinetic energy decreases as it converts to elastic energy, so it cannot be a parabola upward, it needs to be like a downward. So to sketch this graph, I'm going to show you on the next slide how it should look like. So it's an inverted parabola. Start with a value of kinetic energy and decreases over time. When it reaches the maximum compression, the all kinetic energy is gone. So with this, we finalize this question. I personally struggle to sketch the first graph because there are many details to take in consideration. But when you think the balls have momentum and the surface has no friction, it makes sense the force is increasing over time, which is directly connected to the acceleration. This is a dynamic question and you can watch again and practice more questions like this. Now it's time to take a break.